I'm Daph. And I'm Kat. And this and is K&D &D Critters. Critters. Hi guys, it's Daph, and today is all about boa diet. Number one we're going to talk about is how to see if your snake is a healthy weight. When you look at a snake, you should be able to tell if it is a healthy weight. If the snake seems to have excess skin and wrinkles around its body, or you can see their bone structure through their skin, then that is a sign that the snake is underweight. On the other hand, if the snake is overweight, which is unfortunately common, then you can see this by looking at its tail, then in other area where the head meets its neck. On boas, their tail should taper very nicely from their bodies and their vent area should be smooth without any signs of fat deposit, which is sometimes referred to as hips. Additionally, looking around their heads, you should be able to see a defined difference from where their head ends and their neck begins. If you see hips or the difference between your snake's head and their neck isn't defined, then it is a pretty good sign that they're overweight, which is very common nowadays because people want to feed and feed to get their snake as big as possible. Also, when a snake becomes overweight, it shortens their lifespan dramatically. Number two is determining the right sized feeders. Young boas under six months of age are known for regurgitating food when they are fed too large a prey or too often for their first six months. You will want to keep the prey a bit extra small and only feed around every 10 to 14 days. After the six month mark, you can start feeding them every seven to 10 days and slowly increase the prey size. Remember that the size of the midsection should be a good way of it estimating proper prey size. Make sure that it is, at, it is no more than an eighth of an inch bigger than their midsection. Number three is feeder options. Captain boas often eat mice, rats, rabbits, and or even chickens. Once your snake is large enough to take rats, you may want to switch to rats over mice due to their nutritional value. I'll attach a link in the description box to a chart I found while doing a research on best feeders for Athena. Rats are not only great due to their higher nutritional content, but also because they grow to a considerably larger size, which makes it easier to continue to only have to feed one prey item per meal as your snake grows. Once your snake reaches full maturity and you notice its growth rate slowed down, then you may want to start feeding it small rabbits because rabbits have an even higher nutritional protein than rats, but with lower fat ratios, which since your snake isn't growing as fast, it keeps from them becoming overweight or obese. Remember though, even with these guidelines, you still need to watch your snake and make sure your feeding schedule is keeping them at a healthy weight. Number four, feeding in enclosure versus in separate container. This can be a rather controversial subject. As you guys are aware, we feed Athena inside her normal enclosure, but I'm going to try to avoid as much bias as possible on this. So we will start with why not to feed your snake inside its enclosure. The most popular reason for this is that the snake may associate your presence around or in their enclosure as feeding time and could increase your risk of being struck. Additionally, if you use a loose substrate, then there's the risk of your snake accidentally ingesting their, their substrate, which can cause impaction. Lastly, if you house your snake with others, you may want to separate them in order to prevent them from fighting over the food. That being said, feeding in a separate enclosure can cause the snake stress, which may make it refuse food or even regurgitate, which is harmful for the system. It's really bad. Also, feeding containers or boxes are typically not at the ideal temperatures or humidities, in which case you have to move your snake back to their normal enclosure rather quickly in order to ensure that they digest their food properly. Lastly, preparing your feeding box and moving your snake around for feeding time can be time consuming and just not very convenient. You're not supposed to hold your snake right after it's eaten. You're supposed to give them one or two days to properly digest it. So having them in a feeding box and then immediately handling them is not always the smartest option. Number five, proper feeding technique. Whether you decide to feed your snake in the enclosure or in a separate feeding box, there are certain techniques that you should always put in place. Firstly, if you're using frozen prey, you will need to thaw the prey item fully and then use warm water to raise the temperature so the snake will accept the food and that the food will be able to be easily digested. This is what Kat and I use. It is a digital infrared thermometer. Parsley frozen food may cause digestion issues or regurgitation. Tongs are an important part of feeding because they help to keep you safe by keeping your hands away from the prey. Tongs also allow you to move the prey around in front of your snake to pique their interest. Keeping your thawed food dry will help prevent substrate from sticking to it. Remember that your, your snake might strike and wrap around its food, then let go after it has killed it, the prey and sniff around the food for a bit. Some snakes begin to swallow their food right away, but some have been known to sniff around for even 30 minutes. Athena's very smart and takes it pretty fast. She kills it and then immediately starts eating. This is normal and you should let them do their thing. 
during this process. Hovering over around the enclosure may stress your snake out and prevent them from eating them. Make sure that you leave, never leave the food overnight in the enclosure because the risk for harm with live prey is way too high and thawed food may go bad before the snake even tries to eat it this way. Number six and the last one, regurgitating food, why it's bad and ways to avoid it. Lastly, I've mentioned regurgitation a few times in this video. So for those who are wondering what that is, it's when your snake essentially reverses the digestion process and forces that food back out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. Typically, if your snake is regurgitating, then that there's something that you need to change. It may be that the prey size is too large or they're being fed way too often. However, it may be something in your husbandry. Also, for instance, if the temperatures are too low for prompt digestion of food or if they're stressed, which can be due to excessive handling or a lack of a proper hide for them to feel secure in. Try not to handle your snake for 48 hours after feeding to help prevent causing regurgitation. If your snake is actually vomiting, this may look like mucus or feces without the urate, which is the white piece. In either case, you need to get your snake to the veterinarian immediately, as actual vomiting is a sign of significant health issues and needs immediate care. As always, like and subscribe and have a wonderful day, guys.